Hey everyone, Ethan Ader here with Horizon Hobby, and I'm here today to talk to you about an exciting and relatively new feature that's found in new Bind and Fly aircraft that incorporate AS3X Plus right out of the box. And this new and exciting feature is Smart Transmitter Files. These smart transmitter files allow Spectrum NX and IX users to directly import a model file from the aircraft's receiver directly to the transmitter. And this essentially eliminates the need to set up the model manually in the transmitter, making your model configured and ready for its first flight in a matter of seconds after the binding process. So far, these smart transmitter files can be found in new E-Flight aircraft such as the 1 meter P-51 Mustang, Sportix 1.1 meter, and of course the aircraft that you see here in front of me, which is the E-Flight Viper 64mm EDF. Now this was the first aircraft to incorporate AS3X Plus and a smart transmitter file directly out of the box. And I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is to have your smart transmitter file loaded and configured on your Spectrum transmitter and essentially having your aircraft ready to fly in a matter of seconds just after the bind process. The first thing that you need to do to utilize the smart transmitter file is to create a new model on your spectrum transmitter. So we can go down here, select add new model, and it doesn't even matter the model type because the smart transmitter file and the model file that's on the receiver is going to automatically know that. So we can just hit create like so, and you can see that the transmitter is going to create a new model. Now that we are at the main menu, we've done everything that we need to do so far on the transmitter, and that's just create a new model. Now we can go ahead and power up the Viper 64 millimeter. Go ahead and press the button to initiate the bind mode so you can see that the orange LED is flashing. Now we can go over to the transmitter, select the scroll wheel to go to the function list and go down to bind. Hit yes and bind one more time and we are now going to bind the transmitter up to the receiver. So as you can see, the Viper 64 millimeter is now bounced up to the transmitter. It just cycled its servos. As you can see on the transmitter, it's auto configuring and soon you're gonna see a prompt about the smart transmitter file. Here it is right here. So it's just stating that the receiver contains a preloaded smart model file. So all of the settings that you need to do to set up the transmitter for the Viper 64 millimeter are all in this transmitter file. And it's gonna ask you if you want to load the file from the receiver. We're going to select load and you're gonna get another prompt that basically says this will override all of the current model settings and also if the stock bind and fly model hardware has changed. So if you change out the servos, change out the orientation or anything like that, the receiver's file may not work properly. But since this Viper 64 millimeter is fresh out of the box and we have not changed the hardware, we can disregard this prompt and select confirm. And just like that, the transmitter is now configured and set up for the Viper 64 millimeter, all thanks to the smart transmitter file. And in a matter of seconds, the Viper 64 millimeter EDF is ready for its first flight, all thanks to the easiness of the Spectrum smart transmitter file. Now, of course, I always recommend going through and checking all of your servo directions as well as the gyro response. Just make sure everything is working correctly. And also you want to go through and mechanically adjust your control rods so all of your surfaces are flush. This is usually a prerequisite for bind and fly aircraft, plug and play aircraft, and almost ready to fly aircraft that have electronics pre-installed. But after you've gone through everything, you are essentially ready for your first flight. Now one great feature that the smart transmitter file sets up for you is the use of flight modes. And these flight modes are going to be paired with your flap switch so that whenever you change your flap position or your flap setting, you are also changing the flight modes. Now what this does is it allows the pilot to precisely trim the aircraft for each flap position. For example, let's say that I'm flying my Viper 64 millimeter in my clean flap configuration flight mode. So as you see here, I'm in normal mode and my flap configuration is all the way up. And let's say that I find that I need some up elevator so I decide to trim the aircraft and as you see here, I have a trim value of negative 14. Now if I go into a takeoff flap configuration, I am changing my flight mode and as you see here, my trim value is going to reset. And let's say that I trim the aircraft out and I find that I need some down elevator in order to account for the flaps uh, making the Viper 64 millimeter balloon. So in turn, I have a trim value of plus 12 on the elevator. And as you see, I go back into normal mode, I have that original value of negative 14. 
And then whenever I change into takeoff flaps, it resets my trim value to whatever I trimmed it in that flight mode. And in turn, I will always have this aircraft trimmed out and flying straight. And of course you can do this for all three flight modes. So as you see here, landing flaps, I haven't adjusted any trim value. So I could go ahead and trim that to let's say plus 20 and then it will be set for that flight mode. And again, going back to takeoff flaps, you see plus 12, which is what I originally trimmed it at. And then back to normal mode, I have negative 14. So again, this ultimately results in the aircraft being trimmed for every single flap configuration. Now, if anyone prefers to just have one set of trim values for all three flight modes, you can easily do so as well. And all you need to do is select the scroll wheel and go down to system setup. And as you see here, the RF on the transmitter will be disabled. So you wanna make sure that your aircraft is unplugged whenever you do this. Select yes and go down to trim setup right here. And in order to use the same set of trim values, all you need to do is change these trim types from flight mode to common. So as you see here, we have all of these set to common for the aileron elevator and rudder. And now whenever we go back to the main menu here and we give an adjustment to the trim. So as you can see here, we have a trim value of negative 10 for the elevator and we cycle through our flat modes. It is going to stay negative 10. So that's a good option if you opt to just use one set of trim values. And that's gonna cover it on talking about how easy smart transmitter files are to utilize and also the added benefits of flight modes whenever you have an aircraft that changes its flight configuration. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy this new feature and we will see you all in the next one.